All right, let's get started with chapter one of the workbook of quantitative tools and techniques in marketing. The first part is where we discuss different types of data. In marketing, you'll deal with many different types of data. They can be categorized into these four groups. To start off with, at the high level, it's either categorical or numerical. If you look in your workbook, page two and three, you'll actually see the kinds of categorical data we have. If it's categorical data, it can either be nominal or ordinal. Nominal data, if you look on the page three, you see many different kinds of nominal data. It could be something like the race of a person, white, Hispanic, African American, Native American, Hawaiian, Asian, etc. In that case, the categories have no logical sequence. They're just distinct categories. In other cases, the nominal data could have a logical sequence, such as generational cohort, where you have World War II, Baby Boomer I, Baby Boomer II, Gen X, Millennial, where we've gotten closer and closer to being, to being the present day of being birth, born. The kinds of analysis we'll do with nominal data is different from the kinds of analysis we'll do with numerical data. Ordinal data, if you look on page four, you'll see some different examples of ordinal data. It's like first, second, or third, or just a, a very clear ordination. I prefer grapefruit over grapes is a type of ordinal data. We won't be analyzing ordinal data very much, for there isn't much we can do with ordinal data other than simply list them in the order of preference or list them in the order of importance. The next kind of data would be numerical. Now, numerical data is what you probably think of when you think of data. Numerical data can come in the format of interval or ratio. And interval data is like a 1 to 5 scale or a negative 2 to positive 2 scale or a 5 to 10 scale. I give you those three examples because in truth, all interval data can be mapped in, well, those three examples are all equivalent in the sense that there's five different points along the interval and where the zero is may or may not be relevant. You'll see listed on page five at the top, a number of different kinds of interval data. Finally, we get to ratio data. Now, the difference between ratio data and interval data is that ratio data has a meaningful zero. For instance, no income is meaningful. It is a zero. Whereas the interval data, it might just ask low income, high income on a low, medium, high, three intervals. Ratio would actually say zero, one dollar, two dollar, a half a dollar, negative dollars, example. We'll deal with the numerical and numerical data in future chapters. In this chapter, we're going to look specifically at categorical data and more specifically at ways of visualizing nominal data. Okay, so if you open up your spreadsheet for chapter one, you'll probably find something like this on the Chicago race tab. The tabs are denoted way down here. So this is your opening spreadsheet. This is the exact same data you'd see on page six of your uh, workbook. If you turn to page eight of your workbook, you see a nice pie chart of this data. We're going to go ahead and create that pie chart now. So the first thing we need to do is, well, we have our, let's take a look at our data. It's a geographical area, the metropolitan statistical area. This is data that was downloaded from the Census Bureau and slightly adjusted. Uh, for the Chicago area, if you notice the Chicago area isn't just the city, it's the Chicago metropolitan area. And in the Chicago metropolitan area, there's about 9.5 million people there. That's our total population. They divided it up into these different races, which are clearly, you know, types of nominal data. Some, some, sometimes you would use these as segmentation variables, in which case you'd be doing a format of demographic segmentation. Let's go ahead and insert a uh, pie chart. So here's our home screen. This is what you probably started out looking at. Look up at the top. 
have a lot of different parts. Let's go to insert tab up here at the top. And we're going to insert a pie chart. Just insert a pie chart. Notice my cursor is in the middle of nowhere. I do that very carefully because otherwise it will just simply grab data and plot it meaninglessly. So let's control what Excel does instead of letting Excel control us. So I'll insert a simple pie chart, very simple one, and there we go. What you see is a blank slate where the chart will be built. First thing we have to do is select data. So I'll hit select data, add the series. <clears throat> this is the uh, data I want to actually plot, and I, I think I'll actually plot the population size in each group. Oops, that's the name. Delete. There, that's a good name for it. And now I'll select the data there. So you see in the series values, I've selected the data right there. Right there, I'm selecting the data. That's my series values. Series name, I just simply t selected that little name. I could have also typed in the name, and I'll show you an example there, Chicago. Now, that'll work as well. Uh, edit. I could have just typed in Chicago. Okay. You see now the top over here just says Chicago. I'm going to edit that again and select the little tab so it says the whole metropolitan area. Okay. If you take a look at our little plot here, it just says one, two, three, four, eight. Now that means nothing. What happened is our horizontal axis or our categories were not selected. So I need to select those. I'll again select edit and I'll click the categories. Now suddenly you're seeing names. I'll say OK. I'll say OK again. And I'll have the plot right here. I can't see all of the categories because you see I go down to two or more races in my actual data. So I need to get all the rest of those data categories up there. The easy way is just draw this down a little bit. There we go. That'll do. I'm going to make the screen a little bit smaller by holding the control and rotating the little scroll bar. So now I have a basic plot of my pie wedges for my different categories, my nominal categories. Suppose, looking back on a chap on the page eight of my book, we have the population listed and the percentage in each population. To do that, I'll go up here to our chart tools, design. Let's just explore this for a second. I can change the way it looks. Make it all different colors of blue, red, green, purple, uh, grays. I think I'll choose the grays for now because that's what I have in the book. But it's easier to tell by these colors. So I'm going to leave it in the color format for the uh, video purpose. But I still have the numbers. Let's take a look at layout. That has all sorts of different parts, including data labels. Well, I can add data labels. I'm going to just choose best fit, and you see how it just gets data labels thrown on there. Not so bad. I can actually add more data label options, put in the percentage as well. Close. Now you're seeing the population size and the percentage for each group. If you compare this plot with what you see on page 8 of your workbook, you'd see the two are relatively sim similar. In this way, we have created a nice plot of the categorical data or the demographic segmentation data according to race of the Chicago Naperville Joliet area. From this, you should be able to do exercise an exercise in the back of the book. Uh, specifically on page 17 and 16, you can execute that particular exercise. Okay, so now we've looked at some categorical data, nominal type, where the Differences between the categories had no real meaning. There was no meaning to the sequence. We made it a pie chart. Here, where we're looking at age groups, it does have a meaning to the sequence. I mean, 
5, 5 to 9, 10 to 14. Each age group is, is sequentially getting older and older. We could make a pie chart, but it's not as informative as the column chart that you see on page 10 of your book. So let's create that column chart you see on page 10. Go back here, select Insert tab at the top, going to put in a column chart. Now you notice there's lots of different kinds of column chart. We'll keep it simple, a simple 2D column chart. Again, a blank slate should arise because I chose a blank cell to begin with. Now I will select data, select data, series legend, add a series name, there's my Chicago Naperville name, series values, there's my values once again, okay, okay, and now for the axis labels, that's the names of these axis labels, okay, okay, and there's my plot, my raw plot. Not so bad, but we need to make a few changes to it to make it look like what we have in the book. First of all, we're only plotting one series. So over here we have a legend. We don't really need the legend. I'm going to delete it. Second of all, these sequences and the categories make a continuous sense. So we should actually have the bars or the columns touching each other in a way of to communicating a continuous flow of age groups from really young to really old. I'm going to adjust the column widths. I'm going to right click on one of these columns. I'm going to format the data series. See it says gap width. I'm going to make it gapless. But I am going to add a border, some border of any choice of color. I will just choose a light blue to go with the dark blue. Say so close, click away from the, pl from the plot, and there we have the data plotted. Now if you turn on page 12, you'll see that the data is plotted not in terms of absolute number of people in each group, but percentage. I'm going to select this and just move it off to the side. And over here, I'm going to type in the word percentage. There's my total population there. Here's the number in this group. How do you calculate percentage? Well, you divide the number in this group by the total population. I'm literally just typing in equals, then selecting the cell, putting in a division side, then selecting the other cell. And notice how the cell, num the cell code appears in the formula. I'm going to change this to percentage format. And so you see 7% of the people are under the age of 5, which makes sense. Notice this uh, code format for the cells that are selected. B, that's the column. That's my column. 4, that's my row. 1, 2, 3, 4. That's row 4. So row 4 is the number of people in age group 5 or under. B2, the green one, is the number of people in the total group. Now I'm going to show you a trick. It's called the power of the dollar sign. I'd like to just copy this from row to row, but as I copy it from row to row, the uh, age group, that will change because this is now B5, B6, B7, B8. Notice there's all Bs, so the column doesn't change on the age group. So in terms of this numerator up here, the numerator, B4, the B, doesn't, the B gets to, is constant, but I don't have to do anything because I'm just going from row to row in the same column, C, no big deal. The row number 4 will change, so I can, I'm okay letting that change. Now let's look in the numerator. I don't want the total population to change. Now I'm going to stay in the same column, so I don't have to worry about the column changing. I do have to worry about the row number changing. I'm going to put my cursor right in front of it, type a dollar sign. Learn the power of the dollar sign in Excel. Your life will be much e easier. Hit return. I'm going to hit copy, control C, go down a few rows, 
hit paste or control V. There it is. There's other ways people copy and paste as well. Some people will just take this and drag. It works okay as long as you're dealing with one dimension. I find control C and control V or copy and paste slightly easier to work with. Some people will actually go up here and hit copy and paste. I don't know where copy is. So I'm going to hit control C. I'm going to select all the rows. See here paste. There's a paste and lots of different ways to paste. I'm going to paste the formulas and the formats there. There it is. If you notice in the rest of this course I will mostly just use the hot keys of control C and control V for copy and paste. All right. Now, if I wanted to plot this, instead of using numbers, percentages, I'm going to move this off to the side, copy the entire graph, paste it right here, select this data, and watch what I'm doing very carefully. Here's the data being plotted. I actually want to plot this. I'm going to grab the handlebars on the side, just slide it over one, and now you see it's being plotted in percentage-wise. That does it. I just made the plot of the age groups of the Chicago, Naperville, Joliet area here, or the Chicago Metropolitan Statistical Area, in a percentage. I'm going to scroll out a little bit. You might be asking, well, why did I do it both in terms of absolute numbers and percentage? Wouldn't I always want to use absolute numbers? The answer is no. Suppose I wanted to compare Chicago to San Francisco. Well, the size of the towns are different, but their age profiles may be similar. In order to show that their age profiles are similar, it's often better to work with percentage than raw numbers. You'll see this even more strongly when we look at other ways of interpreting data from a sample and extrapolating to a population or comparing data between samples.